So here's my spiel about Superman Birthright in comparison to Man of Steel. Uh, again, this is spoilerful, so if you haven't read the comic or seen the movie, then whatever. Uh, watch at your own risk. So, let's move forward. Both of these are a reimagining of Superman's origins for the 21st century, both the movie and the book. And I feel like the book does a better job in the fact that Clark Kent chooses his own destiny. Uh, Mark Waid does a really great job of highlighting Clark Kent's decisions and how he comes to those decisions and why he comes to those decisions uh, and why he chooses to be who he is, how he figures out how he fits into the world. It's really well done. Whereas in Man of Steel, Clark Kent is passive. We don't get to know him. We don't get to see his struggles. Um, we get like a little taste of it, but no real meat and potatoes. And I feel like it's just, uh, it's just not as good. I mean, and, th and that's the thing. That's, that's a big thing. Mark Wade, if you don't know anything about him, he fucking loves Superman more than any of us. Like more than anyone on the planet. Like that's like, that's a fact. Like it, that should be like in the dictionary or some shit. Like on Wikipedia, it should say man who loves Superman more than anyone. So of course... Birthright is going to be better than Man of Steel because this guy like wrote the fucking book on Superman. He's a Superman fucking historian. He's like the unofficial historian for DC in general. Like this guy is, he understands, okay? Like in his heart of hearts. Okay, so again, both of these films understand that Superman needs to be updated and, and modernized because he just doesn't work anymore. The big blue Boy Scout, Silver Age Superman, nobody wants that shit because he represents the status quo, according to Mark Wade, which uh, the new generation, I mean, we're very weary of the status quo. We know that it's bullshit. <laughs> um, so, and in Birthright, he has uh, Superman, instead of just blindly fighting for a system uh, that is antiquated and that we've grown out of, instead he has him fighting against political and corporate corruption, uh, which I think is something that's very important to the modern generation, and he really does a great job of making him relevant again. Uh, and again, it's like Man of Steel. They didn't really understand that, and they never really did any of that. And it's just, it's just not, it's just not there. You know, it's just not in there because I don't know. They just don't know what they're doing. Another thing that I thought was really poignant about Birthright was in the end, Superman saves Metropolis from this faux Kryptonian invasion that was plotted by Lex Luthor to ruin his public image and put Luther above Superman in the eyes of its citizens. But in the end, it's Clark Kent's investigative reporting that puts Lex away and exposes him. So Superman does, you know, the heavy lifting and then Clark Kent comes in and like fucking brings up the rear. And it's just amazing how he balances these dual personalities uh, in such a beautiful way where they just like really complement one another. Like it's really interesting how Superman can't do everything and that there are things that Clark Kent can do that Superman can't do, which is fucking brilliant. It's fucking brilliant. Uh, and in Man of Steel, Clark Kent really isn't even in it. The journalism thing isn't going on. There's none of that. It's, uh, you know, it just doesn't add up. Just, just doesn't compare. And that's the thing. My favorite thing about Superman Birthright is the character of Clark Kent. We really get to know Clark. We see him first. We get to know him and we, we get to see how he's like trying to figure out where he came from and he's trying to figure out his parents and he doesn't know he's from Krypton. He doesn't know any of that shit. He knows that he's different. He knows that he's probably from the stars, but we really get to go with him on this emotional journey of his. We get to watch him figure out how to make a costume and, and Ma Kent is helping out and it's really cute. And she's like super into UFOs and they have like this really great correspondence. And you also see this part where Clark's working at the planet and uh, nobody likes him. So they're all saying, hey Clark, uh, we're gonna go out to this one restaurant. And then they end up going all to another restaurant. And so Clark's like shows up to the wrong place, but he can hear them across town like, talking shit about him and like laughing about him. And then Lois is like, you guys are dicks. Um, but it's like, that's so isolating. It's so sad. It's like, but he like, how he deals with it is just what's so inspirational. And again, Man of Steel didn't have any of that. So whatever, whatever Man of Steel, whatever. I don't care. <laughs> and my final note about uh, birthright is that at the very end there's these two pages where you see Superman's Kryptonian mother and father and they're looking at this screen and and you see that 
uh, a message from Superman did end up coming through to them and he says, mother, father, I made it. And they know that he made it and they kiss and then they blow up. And it's just like, oh, I'm getting like emotional right now talking about it. It's, oh, I can't do this. <laughs> that shit just really gets to you, man. And nothing got to me in Man of Steel. Nothing at all, except for boredom. I was looking around, I was like, fuck. It was like the Amazing Spider-Man all over again. I was just like, damn it, this is never gonna end. And uh, yeah, so Superman Birthright is about Clark Kent's origins, right? All-Star Superman is about Superman at his peak, at his pinnacle, at like everything he's supposed to be for us. And it's kind of like, you know, Birthright's the alpha, All-Star's the omega. So as I said earlier, uh, in my first part one review, I used to hate Superman, and I really did. I really didn't get him. I thought he was fucking lame, boring, stupid, unrelatable, overpowered. But then again, it's like, I mean, look at where I came from. It's like, I got to see like fucking 90s Death of Superman bullshit. So it's like, of course I didn't believe in him anymore. You know, it's like, who would after that? But eventually uh, I had a friend recommend me read All-Star Superman, and I read it, and I was like, Holy shit. Holy shit. I get it. I take it all back. Superman is amazing. I respect him. I finally respected him. Uh, and I respected him because I saw him as just like being emotionally, like intelligent, like intelligent, not just like brain wise, like emotionally intelligent. He was like, he was just thoughtful and, and amazing and just like compassionate and full of love. And I was like, damn, like this I can understand, you know? And it's and that's the thing, Grant Morrison really understands Superman and in his point of view, Superman is an allegory for the sun. He is written as a sun god. Uh, I mean, if you look at the cover, you, you have him and he's like, oh, and there's the sun right behind him. I mean, look at the first issue cover. He's not punching anyone, you know? He's sitting there on, above the clouds, looking down on Metropolis, smiling on us, you know? He's like, I love you. And within the comic, there's even a whole deal where Superman goes to the bizarro like underverse where like the sun sets and he has to come back out of it and there's that whole cycle. Uh, it's really interesting. And even the name itself, All-Star Superman, they mean it like All-Star, like he is the sun, like in every aspect. Uh, it's like a double entendre. But it's definitely the most definitive, uh, it is the definitive Superman comic. I mean, ev everyone, even everyone in the industry is like, this is it, like everyone knows it, you know? And that's, and that's why I'm so bothered by Man of Steel, because Man of Steel's Superman was kind of like, to me, the, the Superman that I didn't like growing up. Like, he did everything that I didn't like about Superman when I was a kid. And none of the stuff that I respected him for that I saw in All-Star Superman. They made him, they made him dumb, and it's like, I can't respect that. Like, I have a really hard time with that. I, yeah, I think that this, I think that Man of Steel was a really bad representation of, of comics. Uh, I don't think it was, you know, and I know that it's its own thing, and I know that maybe it's not trying to be a representation of comics, I guess. It's trying to be, you know, its own movie, and I get that, and I'm not against it. I'm not against it having its own continuity or its own different things, making twists on the characters. That's all well and good, but if you're going to make a twist, like, know why you're making it and have a reason for it, you know, other than oh, people will like this, or it's darker and people want darker stuff, you know? All-Star just has layers and layers and layers of meaning. And even if you don't catch most of it, which I know that I didn't upon like the first reading, like you gotta read it like three or four times and then do research on it to figure out other things. <laughs> like it's, it's a hell of a book. Uh, you can really dive into it if you want to. But even, like I said, even if you don't understand all those layers, like you're gonna get something from it, you know? And you're gonna have a wider appreciation for Superman. You're gonna have a higher perspective on him as a character, as the concept, as an idea. And another thing that's so great about All-Star is that even though it really is about Superman, it also includes his supporting cast and does a really great job of showing them at their pinnacles. Uh, you have these really great uh, Lois Lane story where she's a Supergirl for a day and they go on this romantic date and it's it's so much fun. Like, it's really awesome. Uh, there's an amazing Jimmy Olsen story in there. That, like, I never thought Jimmy Olsen could be cool, but Grant Morrison and Frank Quietly, like, really know how to make him the coolest uh, that I've ever seen, like, and I think you will ever see Jimmy Olsen being. Uh, and plus that issue is really hilarious, but also has super poignant moment when 
uh, Superman's been affected by black kryptonite, by the, the K kryptonite or something. And it turns him bad. He goes bad. And he, you know, and he starts being a dick. And Jimmy Olsen has to go up against him. He takes this doomsday serum and he turns into this doomsday and they're fighting. And then Superman, like, gets as, as worse and as bad as he gets, he gets weaker and weaker. And, and at the end, he he's crying that he's afraid about dying. And it's like, really? Damn it. I'm doing it again. <laughs> Anyways, it shows, like, Superman, and even Superman's afraid of death, you know? And, like, it even shows that no matter how strong he is, he still has the same problems as everyday people. It's just they're, like, on a much bigger scale, you know? And that's something that I really appreciate about it. Quick side note, another really fun character moment that I just fucking love and I think is completely brilliant is Lex Luthor. Lex Luthor is in jail. Clark Kent has got the exclusive interview with Lex Luthor before he's to be executed for his uh, crimes against humanity. And while he's there, there's a prison riot that goes on and uh, he's hanging out with Lex and Le Lex is like protecting like Kent the whole time. It's really funny. And it's like there's these great moments where Lex is like working out, you know, and he's like, feel that, you know, that's a real muscle, not like Superman. He didn't have to work for that shit. Like I got to work for this. And I thought that was great. Like, I loved how his vanity was highlighted. I thought that was really smart. Um, he even, uh, <laughs> he even, if you notice in the comic, he has a really, like, perfect eyebrows. And I notice because I'm an eyebrow person. Like, I'm totally in the eyebrows. It's, I have a problem. And, uh, and in the comic book, while they're doing their thing, Lex Luthor, like, somehow, like, wipes one of his eyebrows off because he pencils them on because he's so vain. He pencils his own eyebrows in into the perfect shape. And uh, Clark Kent later, or later on, he finds out that he doesn't have one of his eyebrows. And he's like, oh, God. And then he, like, turns around and he's, like, drawing it back on, you know. And when he turns back around to, like, talk to Clark Kent, he's got, like, this one wild eyebrow because he, like, didn't have a mirror. And it's fucking hilarious. He even, like, comments to him. He's like, you've got, like, the Superman eyebrow. You know, most men unconsciously pluck their eyebrows to look like him, you know. And it's just, it's so great because... Eyebrows, Lex Luthor's right. He's like the smartest man in the world and he's concerned with eyebrows. So I feel like, I don't know, that's saying something. Eyebrows are really important. Now, point being, uh, Lex Luthor is just, he's very vain and he's very jealous of Superman. Uh, he doesn't like that everyone likes Superman more than him. And in the end of the book, uh, Lex Luthor gives himself Superman powers for a day. He gives himself the serum and he's like kicking Superman's ass and everyone's like, oh shit. And how Superman defeats Lex Luthor is by letting him take his own serum so Lex can like walk a mile in Superman's shoes and see from his perspective because Lex Luthor starts seeing the way Superman sees and he can see atoms and he can see like tiny little molecules and particles floating around and he sees how everything's connected and he sees that the universe is all one and then he like breaks down and can't handle it and like cries because he's just like I, he, like, he can't do what he's been doing anymore. Like, once he sees that everything is connected, he's like, I can't do this anymore. And there's a theory going around on the internet uh, that the character of Leo Quentin is Lex Luthor, who escapes to the past after he figures out that what he's been doing is wrong so he goes to the past so he can make up for it and be the Lex Luthor that he should have been, like the good guy that he could have been. And that's who Leo Quentin is. And there's all these weird little clues like where people are like saying, are you talking to yourself again when he's talking to Leo Quentin? And there's all these other weird little things in there. There's a whole article about it. Like just Google it. But um, fuck, man, that is so fucking smart. That is so fucking smart. And is there anything like that in Man of Steel? No. Bear Allen Lilo, the fucking... Kryptonian astronaut, husband and wife team, I fucking cried at that fucking issue. I didn't feel anything in that goddamn movie. I didn't feel anything. Even, you know, another side note. You know, fuck Man of Steel. We're not going to talk about it anymore. We're just going to keep talking about this fucking comic because it's fucking good. I don't even need to compare it because there's no comparison. Another fun fact, Grant Morrison himself may have put uh, himself in the comic as Zabaro, the bizarro poet who is trapped on Bizarro land and he's like the only Bizarro who can like think and is like a fucking nice guy, you know? And all the other ones are like stupid and like, you know, Bizarros. 
And it's like, he like asks like Superman, he's like, just humbly, he's like, will you please just like read my work, you know? And then like before Superman goes, like he, he does and he's like, I think your work's really good. And he brings back his poetry with him to earth to like have it. And it's, I think that's, I don't know, that's totally Grant Morrison where he's just like, Superman, like, will you like read my work? Like, because he does think of these characters as gods, like, and they are, I mean, like they essentially are. And so he treats them as such. Uh, with a lot of reverence, and he's such an anthropologist. It's just fantastic. I really like his weird philosophical shit. I just, I'm into it. What do you, what do you want? It's not for everyone. You may not like it. You may not, you know, want to deal with it. But, man, it's something else. It'll change your life. I could talk about this probably for 10 more years, but I have to cut myself off somewhere. This is probably already way too long. And, yeah. I was reading the back of Superman Unchained, and both Jim Lee and Scott Snyder were like, all sort of Superman is the one. It, it, it is the definitive, like, what Superman is deal. Ow! I am pissed now! Oh, geez. I'm gonna write you the most scathing comment about what a bitch you are for having an opinion on my new favorite movie! Is that right? My favorite! I mean, no. This movie, <laughs> this movie, this movie is a 10. Whoever doesn't agree is a retard. You should go watch The Piano or Titanic. People who say it's too much action, it's too long, it's too CGI, go watch movies from the 80s. You're right. I, maybe I should go watch the movies from the 80s. I, I can't, I can't, I can't. Seriously, Man of Steel has to be the finest example of a perfect movie I've ever seen. A it has perfect, everything. A perfect movie. Action, suspense, romance, tragedy, terror, cheekiness, everything. Cheekiness. It even has a reference to Lex Luthor. It even has a... What that's, more could you want? It's there's, the greatest superhero film. There's nothing more. That reference to Luthor was all it took, and I'm in.